The Flashforge 85X is the cheapest multicolor enclosed printer on the market. But are you sacrificing quality in exchange for the low price tag? So in this video, I'm going to go over all the features of the 85X and give you my thoughts on the printer after using it for a while. So the 85X is a Core XY printer with a build volume of 220 by 220 by 220. It doesn't come with an enclosure, but it has the option of actually 3D printing the enclosure pieces and buying the plexiglass from Flashforge's website for $49. This enables you to be able to print a lot more filaments than you typically would on an open frame printer. Now the 85X is no slouch when it comes to speed. It's actually keeping up with printers like K2 Plus with a 600 MMS over 20,000 MMS acceleration. Now the hot end can go up to 300C and the bed up to 110C. But one thing it's missing is a heated chamber. It does not have a heated chamber, but I have a solution for that. And I'm going to tell you guys about that here in just a little bit. Now, I think the biggest feature of this printer is the IFS right here on the side of the machine. One area that this printer stands out from all the other multicolor machines is the way it does multicolor. It doesn't have a CFS box or an AMS system. This is the multicolor unit. It's called the IFS and it feeds your four filaments from the side of the printer. And that's how Flashforge has managed to keep the price down because we all know how much the CFS and AMSs cost. And sometimes those CFS and AMS units, they actually cost about what this printer costs. So I think Flashforge did a really good job at innovating with this IFS system in order to keep costs down. Another way that they were able to keep costs down was it doesn't ship with an enclosure. It doesn't ship with the camera. These are things that you can add on for not a lot of money. The enclosure was like $49. The camera add-on itself was like $39, but if you don't want those things, then you're not paying for them. Now with the enclosure, I opted for the enclosure because I want to be able to print certain filaments. Camera is not good quality whatsoever, but it will put eyes on the print for you. And if that's all you're trying to do, then great. If you're buying the camera for quality time lapses, I highly suggest going with a standalone camera or just using your phone or something like that because the camera on this thing is definitely its weak point. But if that's all you got to worry about, then you're in good shape because cameras are a diamond a dozen and I'm more looking at its printing features quality and stuff like that so let's talk about quality did it take a dive in quality in order to hit that low price point and my opinion after using the machine for several weeks is no it prints honestly just as good as any other machine in my studio I've got k2 pluses I've got the core one the Creality high the bamboo x1c the k2 pro and honestly I guarantee you if I put a benchy side by side you won't be able to tell which is which a matter of fact that's what I'm gonna do okay Okay, so here's several benches. I printed them all in different colors so I can tell and I wrote on the bottom which one is the 85X. Take a look and see if you can pick out the 85X out of all of these. Now some of these printers like the K2 Plus is well over 1500 bucks. The Core 1 is also another high dollar printer and the X1C. So if you picked this one then you'd be correct. This is the 85X bench and as you can see it definitely didn't take a dive in quality. So I think it's safe to say that Flashforge has figured out a way to lower the price and not lower the quality which is great so we know the 85x can print quality then how do they get it down in that $400 price range when all these other printers are up in the $1200 and $1500 range well in my opinion it's the way Flashforge is offering this printer for sale like not having a high quality built-in enclosure and not having two or three AI cameras built into the printer and also not having a heated chamber it's things like that that drive up the cost when you're building a printer and excluding items like that have really allowed Flashforge to offer this printer at that $400 range. Hey, if you're not subscribed, make sure you're subscribed, hit the like button, and check out the giveaway that we're doing with Claw Labs. So Claw Labs sent us out their rug tufting kit, and they were nice enough to send us out another kit to give away to you guys, worth over 300 bucks. Yeah, I know, you're probably wondering what rug tufting is, so check this out. So Claw Lab has a kit that comes with a rug tufting gun, and it comes with really everything that you need to create your own rug. And it's actually very cool. I've already started making a rug for my makerspace. You can make one for yours, because where else can you buy a Creality rug or a Bamboo Lab rug or whoever your favorite 3D printing machine is, you can actually make your own rug. Or if you're into cosplay, you can make Marvel rugs or comic rugs or whatever you like to make, you can make it and personalize your makerspace with Claw Lab. So this kit, it comes with pretty much everything that you need to get started. It comes with a ton of yarns. It comes with the rug tufting gun and an aluminum frame, which you need to be able to stretch your canvas. And the frame actually has two C-clamps on it that allows you to clip it to any table. Now, one thing I can tell you 
you're going to need is buy more yarn because this thing runs through yarn pretty quick. And if you want to make a decent sized rug, you're going to need some more yarn, but it's super cheap. So if you want a chance to win the Claw Lab kit, I'll leave a link in the description for you to join the giveaway. And if you don't feel like waiting and you just want to go check one out, we'll have a promo code for you in the description and you can go to their website and check out their kits. All right, now back to the video. Now it's kind of up to you to decide what filaments you want to print. If you're not going to be printing polycarbonates and carbon fibers and stuff like that, that need a heated chamber and an enclosure, then honestly, there's no point in paying for it. And I kind of like the fact that Flash Forge does that because it doesn't leave users that don't need that stuff paying for features that they never wanted to begin with. And honestly, I wish more companies would do this to be able to just go on their website and buy a base model and then check all the boxes of things that you want on your printer. Now, I know that would be a build nightmare for the companies, but man, in a perfect world, that would be awesome. Now, I know what you're thinking. If it doesn't have a heated chamber, like what do you do? You're probably just out of luck on that. And honestly, this printer review, it couldn't have came at a better time because I was already in discussions with a company called iDryer and they make this standalone filament dryer. It's a kit that you buy and then you print out all the parts and then they send you the heater internals and all that stuff. Well, they're dropping a new product called iHeater and it's a chamber heater that works with Clipper or it'll work standalone as well. But the cool part is it does work with Clipper. So if your machine has Clipper, you could plug this into the USB or if you want to get fancy, you can open the machine up, solder it in somehow and you can basically operate a chamber heater straight from your Clipper. So as you can see here, I've installed the iHeater on the 85X and it fits in there perfectly. So I've got mine plugged into the USB, but it does have the option of running standalone power and just plug it into the wall. And it comes in a 110 and a 220 volt, I guess, depending on where you live. And let me tell you, this thing literally took me like 15 minutes to put the guts inside of it. It comes with a 200 watt heater and you basically just throw all the internals in there, print out your case, and you can customize the case however you like. I chose to print mine in the bamboo PC, the clear black, because I thought it looked pretty cool. And you needed to withstand some decent amount of heat. So I chose a polycarbonate. And just to give you an idea of size, I mean, look at my hand here. This thing is super compact and it's probably an inch and a half thick and about seven inches wide and about eight or nine inches tall. So if you want to check out one of the eye heaters, I think it drops on September 15th. I'll leave links in the description for you to check that out. And I'll probably be making a standalone video to show you how I put it together and how you set it up and all of that. Now, just keep in mind, if you're going to add the enclosure, the camera and the heater and all that, you're going to be probably around the $500 range before it's said and done. Now it's just something to keep in mind when you're comparing this printer to other printers. All right, so let me tell you my two favorite features of the 85X. Number one is going to be the IFS, the Intelligent Filament System. Now what's so special about it? Honestly, for me, it's the fact that it doesn't require this huge CFS machine or this AMS or whatever. And honestly, since I've had it, it's just work. And I'm willing to bet over a period of time that this thing doesn't have near the failures or errors that the AMS or the CFS has just because it's such a compact little thing and it's really, really simple. And the good thing about the IFS is it doesn't matter if you're printing with cardboard or plastic rolls. It doesn't care because it's not using the roll. I just think it's overall a really simple, compact design that's not gonna give you near as many issues as a CFS or an AMS. Now, another feature that I really like is the tool head cover, the way it comes off and there's no wire. That's one thing that I really don't like on the Bamboo X1C is that the front tool head cover has a wire. Now this one, they do have a fan in the front tool head cover, but as you can see, it doesn't have wires. It just clips in and it has these little prongs that you line up and it snaps right on with magnets. So I thought that was really smart on Flash Forge's part and I'm really surprised that Bamboo didn't do it in their X1C model. Now, another thing I like about the tool head is the way the four to one splitter clips in. It's really robust and it's not just relying on a FE connector to hold it together. It's got a lot of support and it's really structurally sound and it's not going anywhere. So one really cool feature about the IFS, it has RFID. So I know it works with these bamboo spools because I installed them and it automatically popped up here on the screen. I didn't have to put it in there. Now, as you can see, I've got this Creality roll here, but it did not pop up on the screen and I had to manually put that in. So my thoughts on the 85X when it's all said and done, I I think it's a good printer. I think Flashforge deliberately dumbed down the build of the printer and not in a bad way, just in a way to save money. They didn't waste a bunch of money on a high tech screen, on high tech AI cameras everywhere, stuff that doesn't affect the print quality. They really focus more on print quality. Can it do it fast? Can it do it reliably? And can it do quality? And it kind of checks all those boxes. Now, if you want a fancy enclosure and a fancy screen and all the cameras and stuff like that, then this printer's probably not for you. It kind of reminds me 
of the Nissan analogy. Like if you want to buy a car that's going to run forever, but you're not in a Lexus or a BMW or a Mercedes. So the build quality is not super great, but this thing is reliable and it's going to run forever. It's kind of like that. They focus more on reliability and print quality than they did the aesthetics of the printer. And that's just a choice that they made. Now the choice that you have to make is, will this printer work for you? I suggest looking at some other reviews, looking at some other printers, and then come back and determine, you know, will the 85X work for you? So that's all I've got for this video. Thank you guys for watching. And until next time, stay ready to 3D print.